Hi, my name is Pawus Pechalski and in today's episodes of I give you not so obvious tips, let's concentrate on the smooth HD footage from a drone. Imagine you saw some video, for example, from Schizo. Oh, I want to have the smooth footage like that. You put the same hardware, like the same props, motor, some magical tune, you go flying and hmm, it doesn't look like that, hmm, right? Or, for example, you got yourself a 7-incher, put your GoPro on it and hmm, it's shaky. What's happening? What, what's wrong? Now, there are problems. There are problems with getting a smooth smooth footage from a drone and the higher the, the bigger the propeller size the more problematic the smooth and jello free flight will be so today today i will give you seven seven advices how to have a nice smooth and jello free footage from your hd camera hd camera because FPV cameras are usually very jello resistant. You, if, if, if you got at least slight jello or shakiness on your FPV feed, that means that HD footage will be total absolute crap. But even if the F FPV footage is quite smooth, the, uh, the HD footage might still be not so smooth and affected with jello and, and shaky. And so, so today, seven advices how to get a smooth HD footage from your drone. Advice number one, the frame. The frame. If you want to use bigger propellers, like for example for the 7 inches, you have to remember that the higher the propeller size, the more forces from the imbalanced propeller will be applied to the arms and to the frame. And the longer the arm, the more affected by the resonance the frame will be, it will be vibrating in the air. So it has to be very, very, very stiff. It's not about if it will break during the crash. No, 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 no. It's if it will be able to go into resonance in the frequencies that will affect your footage and make the whole flight not smooth. So rule of the thumb. For the 5-inch props and 6-inch props as well, the 4 millimeter arms are fine. They usually be usually should be stiff enough to have really a nice stiff and no vibrating, not resonating frame. But if you go from 7 inches higher, it gets complicated. The minimum thickness of the arms of the 7 inch quad is around 6 millimeters. Don't even buy some cheap Chinesium with 4, 3, no, 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 it will not work. It will just work as a giant vibrator. You don't want to fly this. If you go from, let's say, 8 above, probably the carbon fiber plate cut into the shape of the arm is already not the very good idea because you would have to use 8 millimeters. This will be extremely heavy, extremely um, expensive and really hard to get. So, up to 7. Uh, Carb full carbon is fine and with seven at least six millimeters uh, thick arms above that really carbon tubes or aluminium or even wood will be better than really carbon this is very important of course the obvious tip that the frame cannot be like fractured cannot be like bending too much it has to be really really stiff to really be able to smoothly fly through the air Advice number two is props and motors. Yes, those two elements have to be combined because you cannot just put any propeller or on any motor because it will just not work. The propeller and the motor has to be matched to work best with the frame you have on the selected weight and the desired speed. With 5 inches, uh, it's really simple. You need 2205, uh, 2206, 2207. It's really already kind of bigish. Maybe 2306 motors in the KV range for, let's say, from 2300 to 
2400 500 kV on 4S. On 6S, of course, less kV 1700 and will, it will be fine. On the 6 inch, maybe even the same motor size will work. You only need slightly less kV, but if it will also kind of work if you will just take the 5 inch 22, even 2205, 2207 motor and put a 6 incher on it. But if you will put a 7 incher on the same motor, even after pulling the kV down to something like 1700 on the 4S, you will notice that no, it's not working. It's not working. Why? Because we are spoiled and we, not spoiled, we simplify the motor and the propeller interaction. We like to talk about the power and we like to talk about the KV without really understanding from what, from where the power is taken and what KV is and what you really, really, really need. You need a motor propeller combo that A, is able to give you enough thrust, static thrust, to keep you in the air and be able to um, give you all the forces you need for the maneuvers, but also the same combo has to be it has to be light and agile enough to be able to really, really, really quickly change the rotation speed to be able to really stabilize the quad in the air. If you put too heavy prop on the, by heavy, I mean really heavy with high pitch, high area and high moment on inertia on the too small motor, the propeller will be just too slow. Not only it will not be able to spin fast enough to, to have enough thrust, but even the, the need to change the rotation speed will be even worse. The, it will be even, there will be even slower response to what um, a flight controller orders the motor propeller combo. The first sign that you have the um, too small motors for the props is characteristical bobbing of the quad. If it, instead of flying straight, it's trying to do something like this, this means that the propeller is just too heavy from the motor. You need much bigger motor for this propeller, to, for this to be able to change the rotation speed fast enough. The role of the thumb. The role of the thumb is that, um, if I'm five inches, everybody knows what, 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 what we need. For seven inches, for seven inches, um, for 7 inch you need at least 2208 motors. Really, 2207 are already slightly too small. So 2208 motors uh, with the uh, oil cover KV in the second. And, but really the fun begins when on a 7 inch you will put something with 2506, 2507. Only then really the fun and the smoothness will begin. Because only then the motor will be big enough to have enough torque to be able to change the rotation speed of the propeller fast enough and will be able to spin faster and deliver enough thrust for you really to go somewhere. So forget about 2207, 2205, 22, even 2306 are too small, at least 2208, but I really suggest going 2506, 2507. There are a few motors already with this uh, stator size and they will really shine on 7 inches. Of course, 8, 9, 10, you again need a bigger motors. For 10 inches, 22, 12 probably is really the smallest you can use and so on and so on and so on. And now the KV. KV for the 7 inches you need, if you want uh, cruising and smoothness, for 4S you need something between 1200 and 1400. If you want really the raw power and just going everywhere and having a lot of fun and like power, power, then you need something around 1700 kV for 4S. For 6S, of course, you should divide the kV with the, from the proportions compute the lower kV, but still you need kind of big propellers and smooth, uh, big motors and smooth propellers with my personal best, uh, personal choice of the Dal T7056C. Side, those big cyclones, they are really kind of kind of kind of nice in the air. I like them very much. But everything has to match. If you have too heavy propeller, too big propeller for the motor, it will not fly smooth. And uh, and yeah, keeping ourselves in the motor propellers 
if you want smooth flights, you have to replace propellers very, very often. For the racing on the 5 inches, it does not really matter that much, but on the 7 inches, if you really want to have smooth flight, you have to replace propellers. You can, of course, train on slightly bended and uh, chipped uh, props or uh, slightly damaged motors, but if you want to have smooth HD, you have to put a new set of props on the quad immediately before, because even one crash will bend it and you can, yeah, you can straighten this. It will be more or less fine to just fly, but the amount of vibration will be so high that no, 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 the HD footage will just be too shaky. So unfortunately, before recording HD, really in good quality, smooth HD, put a new props on her. She will say thank you. No matter what some kind of famous persons on the internet say or write somewhere, yes, unfortunately, you still have to tune your pits and filter to have a nice smooth footage. Why? Because, uh, yes, I know there are some that say, no, you should put the beta flight on it and it will fly great. No, just install new beta flight, it will fly great. <sighs> Maybe. Maybe. But really, the tune is all about the forces and the moments of, of inertia and the vibrations and that are really unique to the machine itself. In 5 inches it's really very simple. Most, most of them are really maybe different frame but they are kind of similar. They all weight more or less the same, use the same, more or less the same propellers, more or less the same of the motors and can deliver more or less the same uh, power, the same forces. So default tune it will be fine. It will be absolutely absolutely fine. But the bigger with the propeller size you get you have to tune both the filters and you have to tune the pits because without that no 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 way you can get a nice smooth footage example i have two seven inch quads one is equipped with the one is more or less towards the cinematic flight with 1250 motors and 2506 really a lot of torque a lot of torque and the second one is more for the freestyle and the required pits for them are like 50 percent different 50% different, more or less the same sizes, but I used a different motors, the same propellers even, and the work quads weight almost, almost the no, okay, the, the, the lower KB is slightly heavier, but really they need completely different tune because of what they are designed to do. So yes, you have to tune, you have to either put the gains up or down, watch some people on the internet doing tutorials how to tune your quads, because yes, you, your 7-inch or 8-inch or 9-inch will not fly well on the default values designed for the 5-inch quad, because the propeller is four times bigger. So how the fuck is this supposed to work good on your new design? Forget about smooth flight during the high wind. Mm -mm, it's not working like that. Unfortunately, if you can fly just race or have fun around the trees, even on the highest wind, the quad will not take care too much about, about the wind itself. But if you want the smooth flight, you need calm weather without wind, because the wind creates turbulences, because the drag is uh, smaller, closer to the ground, the wind really creates a turbulence and if you are flying somewhere near the trees, the wind will also interact with the trees, with the forest, with everything you have around you and create more and more tur turbulences. So if there is even like a, a nice breeze that's cooling you up, it will, it might be visible on the HD footage to have a nice smooth wait for the conditions when there is no wind. You will notice the difference. Really, it, there is a huge difference in the smoothness between calm weather and the windy weather. Just try it for yourself. Weather is weather, right? But what about time of the day? You know, maybe you maybe heard somewhere about the golden hour. It's more or less the hour just uh, before and after the sunset and around sunset when there are best um, 
conditions to take photographs. And because this shooting the HD footage is really kind of photography, the same rules apply. If you will be flying uh, in the direct sun around 12 a.m. is around 1 p.m. when the sun is the highest, forget about uh, having a nice, smooth and good, amazing looking uh, HD footage. Even if this would be smooth, the colors will be washed, there will be too much contrast and everything will look bleh. This is why, if you really like have some super nice, uh, let's say freestyle uh, set that you want to present to someone in HD, take yourself... Uh, Wait until sunset or sunrise if you are hard enough to wake up uh, for the sunrise and record the material over there. Not only the light will be softer and will just look better, but because there will be slightly darker, the camera will have to use slightly longer exposure time and it will be really, it will be really nicely visible in the HD footage. So forget about nice smooth flight in the middle of the day. Yes, you can practice then, but if you really want to record something and impress someone with whoa, what an amazing flight you had, do it either early in the morning or relatively late in the evening, when there is still bright enough, but sun is slow, maybe even uh, behind the horizon. It is, it is really visible. Kind of obvious, right? You need a good camera to have a good footage. Um, it's really nice to have a camera in which you can choose the exposure time. Because the longer the exposure time, the more smoothness, the... Um, how to say it? Blurred, not really blurred, but really smooth um, movement uh, you will be able to record. If you have really like older generation session 4 when you cannot really choose a almost any settings you are kind of like almost screwed because if you want to enforce the camera to use longer exposure times you have to put a ND filter on it. What will an ND filter do? It will lower the limit of the light that is getting to the camera so the camera will have to make each fr record frame for a slightly longer time and this will mm, create the smoothness effect, the flow, the how to say it, yeah, you know how it looks like among the best pilots, but you have to really use a good filters, good expensive filters, forget about cheap china, because they are like, it's really hard to put it, and uh, they have this strange tint, it's looking ugly, no, 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 the more expensive the better, unfortunately the more expensive the better, I'm using something I don't really, I'm using a stick on, I'm using a stick on, I paid like 10 euros for one stick on, I have it on my uh, GoPro for, for like half a year. It's it's fine, and I'm not really peeling this off because why should I? So if you cannot really integrate in the exposure time, please invest in the good ND filters. Unfortunately, relatively expensive ND filters. Put them in in front of your camera lens, and you should notice the difference of the improvement of the smoothness of the flight. And the last tip is speed. Mm -hmm. The faster you fly, the less smooth the flight is. Why? Our quads are not aerodynamic. No, 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 no. The brick has a better aerodynamics than our quads. So everything vibrates, there are mm, high speed air currents going everywhere, which creates turbulences and so on and so on. Not only it's hard not to um, have too many turbulences when you are hovering, but the faster you go, the more turbulences there will be. If you are really into smoothness, lower the camera angle, fly slower and you should notice that the smoothness improved. It's really, it's, it is kind of good idea to fly much slower, much, 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 much slower. Of course, it's really hard to do a power loop much, much, much slower, but if you're not looking power loops, it will be fine. And then speed up this. 
uh, I know it's cheating, I know it's cheating, but this is unfortunately the true. The faster you fly, the more hard conditions are created around your quad, the more, more holes in the air and the electronics will have harder time compensating for this and the motors will have to uh, work faster and, 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 and so on. So slower flight will give you a smoother footage. I'm not even talking about the prop wash when you are doing like 180 in half of the second. I'm just talking about regular flight, cinematic flight from point A to point B. The slower, the smoother, and that's unfortunately... Uh, yeah, I know I love to fly fast, but, oh, but that's unfortunately the truth. That's all for today. The video once again turned out to be slightly longer than expected. Um, I don't think I really covered all the all the problems with uh, smooth uh, footage on the seven and eight inches, but I think I covered really most of them. Um, you do what you want. Who am I to tell you what to do? Um, but I'm fighting with the smoothness of my seven inch quad since almost a year. Um, I've been through many motors, many frames, uh, many, 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 many approaches to mount your camera and stuff like that. And I wasted enough money on this to know this and that. So spare yourself some bucks and just trust me on this. Okay? So until the next one. Bye bye.